All right, folks, and um, welcome to the dawn of World Sports Channel. This is my brand new sports channel. It's not brand new. It's about a month old now, but I haven't posted an awful lot of videos on it yet. So it is in its infancy. Uh, I can pre I, I hope you can appreciate that I've got another channel that is semi um, successful and it takes up a lot of my time. So getting this channel. Um, up to the thousand subscribers as the target for just now and then we can take it from there. This um, talk today is an update on the Brownlow, Donlow medal, the Donlow medal and the roughest and toughest mongrel medal. There's a Rising Stars one happening and a surprise package as well so stay tuned to the end for that. Um, just before we start I want to mention one thing on, my, I've done, uh, on the Don's channel I've done over a hundred AFL videos, that's including reactions, reviews, um, just general chit chat my, with my hashtag AFL car chat, hashtag table talk which we're doing right now and hashtag, hashtag chair chat, uh, a bit of a tongue twister that nearly there, um, I've done over a hundred videos on uh, AFL on that so as you can see in such a short space of time I feel like I've come a long way with this sport and I've learned an awful lot and I'm absolutely loving it and I'm also indeed loving the interaction with AFL fans and um, that's what makes it all worthwhile. But look at the amount of sheets I've went through, there's an, another huge pile upstairs and in, in my car as well from the car chats. I've got a massive pile of paperwork from notes, from games, videos, loads of things that I've wrote down. That's all AFL stuff. So I'd imagine if I'd done a full year, you're talking about near enough a whole pack of paper of AFL videos that I've done. So as I say, my dedication's there. Uh, I'm working really, really hard behind the scenes to learn as much about the sport as possible. I feel like I'm getting uh, to grips with it very well now and I can hold my own in conversations. <laughs> having watched quite a lot of live games and speaking an awful lot about the sport. Um, I still need to learn a lot more about the history of it, um, grand final winners, etc. Like uh, games and stuff that I've lived long and will always live long in folklore for maybe incidences that happened in them, etc. But anyway, on to the next topic. A, a quick update on the Donlow medal, how it's going. I said I wanted a player or two for each team. I've nearly got it from people... Um, throwing names into me in the comments section below and players that I've watched as well I've put in so I'll go through all the teams so far and this was the way I had done this paperwork based on the way the table stood a few weeks ago so I've just added a couple of names to it so it doesn't really matter anyway as long as you go through the teams it doesn't need to be in alphabetical order or any particular order as long as you know the players that are there so listen in carefully for Geelong we've got Tim Kelly, Patrick Dangerfield and Tom Hawkins very, very good players. I'm not 100% on Hawkins. I know Kelly and I know Dangerfield very well. Um, and they have stood out in a lot of weeks. Hawkins, I do know him. I just haven't seen enough of him. But that one was given to me by a subscriber. So I greatly appreciate your help with that one. GWS, the Giants. Coniglio, Josh Kelly and Toby Green. I can't argue with that whatsoever. I'd have probably put Big Cameron up there for the amount of goals he's scoring. I think he's still, still sorry... Top goal scorer in the AFL ladder just now, which is really impressive. He is, he's like an old school type kicker as well. I'm, I'm quite impressed with him. Haven't put his name in. I've left that to the fans really to do this. Um, add his name in because there is a lot of players from GWS so far that you go, been good, been good, been good, been good. But we need to narrow it down. I don't think he's on for a brown loan. He'll definitely be up there for the top goal scorer without a shadow of a doubt. If he gets it or not, will remain to be seen considering. Um, as I say, GWS are going through a little bit of a, part, uh, a, a great patch just now. They're struggling to get the results, but I'm sure they'll come good again. So, Collingwood, Brody Grundy, Steel Side Bottom, Jordan De Goey, and Adam Tre uh, Jordan De Goey, sorry, and Adam Trelaw. trelaw has been absolutely sensational. De Goey is unbelievable in front of goal. There's a few names from Collingwood you can put in there as well. And as we speak right now, Collingwood are struggling as well. They're, They've lost two out of three um, in the game that they did win. They were less than convincing. They do seem to be struggling in front of goal um, and they're not putting opponents away. So anyway, they're, they're key players this year that are on for the Donlow medal. Um, Adelaide, Crozen, Brad Crouch and Rory Sloan are the two names that I got. Um, if there's anybody else wants to put any more in there, then feel free. But they're the two names. If you agree with that. That's fine. If you don't agree and you think somebody else should be in there, then give me a name. That's more than welcomed. 
Um, West Coast Eagles, um, you could put quite a few names in here, but these are three huge names as far as I'm concerned. Luke Shuey, what a performance he had at the weekend. Um, Andrew Gaff, Gaff, one of the best players in the game, there's no doubt about that. And Elliot Yeo, um, he has been sensational for a younger player as well. Really good at the weekend as well. Fremantle Dockers then, Nat Fife, Sonny Walters and Brad Hill. Um, I can't argue with those names. I think I actually might have put a couple of them in myself. They've been fantastic this year. Um, Brisbane Lions, I've only got one name for Brisbane Lions, which is quite disappointing. Um, I do want a couple more, if you can help me out with that. Lackey Neil, Lackey Neil's sensational, so he definitely deserves... <laughs> Um, he definitely deserves. <laughs> he definitely deserves his place on the in for the Donlow Medal. On to Richmond then, and it took a, a while to get more than one name. Obviously, Dustin Martin. And to be honest with you, I don't think Dusty's really been stepping up this last few weeks. So there's other players there that I would put ahead of Dusty, and one of those names was mentioned to me by a subscriber, and that was Shane Edwards, another player I would probably put in above Dusty right now. Um, I believe he's been playing really good stuff is Sydney Stack and he was another one that was actually given to me by my subscribers as well so thanks very much for that Port Adelaide then this is a team really starting to come of age now uh, somebody described them as a smoky I'd never heard of the term smoky it basically means a dark horse an outsider to possibly do it if they can go on a bit of a run who knows if sport is as strange it sometimes throws up the odd shock like that there and if Port Adelaide believe that they can do it, then that could be half the battle to getting them over the line because they certainly possess young, hungry, quality, talented young players, as I said. And a couple of the names mentioned was obviously Travis Boak, who got injured before last week's game there, um, with a sort of lower back um, strain or something like that there, if I can remember off the top of my head. And Robbie Gray, great young player, played very, very well in the showdown at the weekend. So, two great players there. There's a long list of young rising stars from them. So, as I say, we're doing a rising star package now. So, there's a few names from Port Adelaide. And I want help with rising stars, as I, as you can be aware. That I, I don't know all the players' names. Yet. I'm learning as many players as possible. But it's really hard. You learn a player, but he might necess not necessarily been good throughout the year. He's maybe had one good game, and I'm going, oh, he's good. So, that's why I need your help for what where they've been... Before I started watching, which was about a couple of months ago, up until now, who's stood out, who's maybe fizzled out a little bit as well, you know what I mean? Um, or who's shining now and never really started the season well. That's why I need your help for all these things. Um, so we've, we've done Port Adelaide, Bolton, Robbie Gray, on to Essington, who looks like he could be heading to Port Adelaide. Or Zario Fantasia, you know, the, the man who Stratton pinched. Fantasia, you never forget that name, such a strange name really for a surname. And Dylan Shiel, um, there is a couple of young players I actually like in Essendon as well, but those are the two names that were put to me, and I'm not going to argue with them, I actually think they're both good players as well. Um, so that, that's, that's Essendon for you, I mean, they're not awash with loads of great players, they're a fairly decent side, they do seem to be getting a bit of luck right now and getting the results. I say luck, but it could be hard work paying off, um, but very much a team that aren't too far away from the top teams, but just, you know, they're, they're just not quite there either. So Essendon, yep, definitely is a couple of players that deserve to be there, and that those two that I've just mentioned. St Kilda now, I really had problems with St Kilda. A player I just chucked in there right now because of his weekend, I do not know how he's played, but because there was hardly any names given to me for St Kilda, loads of people put St Kilda, no one, no one, no one. I was like, well, I want someone... So was Bruce. He made so many marks and scored so many goals at the weekend that I thought he deserves to go on it, doesn't he? Stepping up when the chips are down and getting some goals, even though they never came out victorious in the game, he stood out for me. And another player that was actually given to me, the only player that was given to me, was Jack Billings. I don't know enough about the guy to comment, so we'll move swiftly on from St Kilda. Um, Hawthorne then, the Hawks. They've been struggling as well. Um, obviously a huge club throughout AFL and VFL history. Um, won so many things. They've, they've been one of the um, dominant forces, if you like. But it's really hard right now to pick quality players and to actually even tune in to watch them because they just, they're not a flowing team. They don't play nice stuff. When they win, it's not usually very entertaining. 
and when they get beat, they've usually been pretty poor as well. So they are a pretty much one of those teams that are just sort of this season, probably just in and around the middle of the, the table, uh, making up the numbers, if you like, the competition, not threatening the top of the pack, and not bad enough to be down with the bottoms, your Carlton's and your Melbourne's, and nowhere near Gold Coast. But anyway, you know what I'm getting at. So the two names mentioned for them was Ricky Henderson and the niggler, the absolute niggler, James Sicily. So that's them two anyway. North Melbourne, there was two names given to me. One of them actually has to be scored out now of the Donlow. Brownlow is going to be the same. The Donlow is going to be the same sort of method as the, the Brownlow. I was going to put it so it didn't matter if you get suspensions. If you were um, fined an awful lot in your in your your, your year, you were still going to um, stand for the Don. Look, I've slightly changed the ruling on this, and I'll explain why. The main reason is um, I'm running uh, a roughest and toughest mongrel medal. So if you've had suspensions, you've usually been pretty much one of the wildlings from north of the wall, running about, f annoying everyone, being an absolute nutcase, uh, getting yourself in a spot of bother. So this medal is the one that you fall into. Because I can appreciate the guys who have been suspended are fine, don't get a brown low, but you'll get something on the Don's channel, on the Don of World Sports channel. Don't worry about that, guys. These are the most prestigious awards in the AFL anyway. Don't worry about the official governing bodies awards come the end of the year. Go no further than this channel. This is where it's at. This is where it's happening. AFL really matters. Um, North Melbourne, Cunnington. An absolute nutcase. Love the guy. Really big unit. Powerful. And he can actually play as well. So. <laughs> she's acting like a weirdo. Boom. Cunnington would have just put her out of there. Um, <laughs> and. Go away then. Uh, yes, distracting me from a flow. Uh, go and put it on then. Your sister will help you. Um, and Robbie Tarrant. Great player, um, certainly deserves to be in there. I already probably mentioned a couple of others because they are actually a very good side coming in here. They're probably the most informed team right now in the, the ladder. Um, and it's a team that I don't want to really miss when they play. They, they just play some exciting stuff. Uh, and there's players that can score goals as well throughout the team in the forward line there. Uh, again, the other two names that were mentioned, so I'm running with them. We need to narrow it down at the end of the day. We can't. We can't uh, have a huge list coming towards the end of the year. There is always going to be players that break away and they've been consistent for more of the games than not. Than not. Um, and that's why it's just broke down to Cunnington. We actually, you could probably throw me in a name there for this, another one, with Robbie Tarrant. Because Cur Cunnington automatically is disqualified from the Donlow but goes straight in. For probably my favourite award, the roughest and toughest mongrel medal, because that's what I love about Aussie rules in the AFL is those sorts of nutcases, and Cunnington fits the bill delightfully. Anyway, on to the Bulldogs. Two players, one of them's a young player, and he's been absolutely fantastic, and it was just given to me, but before we mention him, Marcus Bontempelli. Absolutely brilliant, really, really good player. He's one of the players. Of the last few weeks, has really shone. And tell you what, Bulldogs are starting to get a few wins together and put, apply pressure on the bigger teams. They're, they're too far away to do anything, but they certainly can decide the title race because they could beat the big teams on their day. They proved it um, the other day there that they've got it in their locker to be able to do it beating Geelong. So don't rule this team out from causing the odd upset towards the end of the year because they have got quality. They are dogged. Uh, they, they are up for a scrap, and do you know what? If you get drawn into the scrappy game with the Bulldogs, you'll, you'll, your chances are you could possibly lose because they're good at it. On to Sydney Swans, and I put one in myself, Papley, but he was actually said to me after I put him in, Papley's been fantastic. Um, Buddy, Lance Buddy, frankly, he's had injuries. Big Reedy as well is another one, but those two, Buddy and Papley, were the two games names given to me, sorry. Um, and it's the two names I've wrote down. But there's another wee lad, uh, Blakey, is it? He's the coach's son. Is it Blakey you call him? Uh, I think that's his name. He should be in for my rising uh, stars. I've not actually wrote him in. I've just thought of him there as we were talking about uh, Sydney Swans. I think he's a very, very good young player. Really slight little boy. Very, very skinny. 
but he's got bags of quality. You could imagine when he fills out, gets a little bit more upper body strength. He could be a real player in the in the AFL. Definitely a name to watch out for in the future. So that's the two from Sydney anyway. On to the Demons, Melbourne. Um, gone is the only name given there. You know Gone, big hard man. Uh, and he can play. He's a very, very good player. Uh, he's got the image of a hard man with the beard, the bald head and the, the big prowess. So he's in there without a shadow of a doubt. One name given to me for Gold Course then. Only one name. I don't actually have anyone. It was Braden Fiorini. I don't know if I've pronounced it right, but that's the name that was given to me. I can't argue it, I can't debate it, I can't put anything further to it. They're not a club that I enjoy watching. I don't have any disrespect towards them. It's just, if you follow the AFL, you know what I'm talking about. It's difficult to watch this team play footy. No offence to any of their players, because they're playing the game they love. Um, and it's not their fault that the team's just collectively not good. They've not got a fan base really either. Um, it's just it's a project that doesn't seem to be working out in terms of what the AFL have tried to do in creating Gold Coast. But having said that, lovely place. Uh, I'm sure the people up there are great too. And as I say, I respect the players. At the end of the day, they're, 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 they're better than your average Joes in the street, but they're not good enough as a collective to do anything worth, I think it's 11 straight defeats in the AFL, they're just really there and not doing anything to um, upset the title race in any way, shape or form. On to Carlton then, Carlton find themselves sitting in 17th in the ladder, don't they? Um, and They're awash with fantastic youngsters, but the three names that I'm going to put down here now, and I could talk all day about how many players I've been impressed with at Carlton, um, but they're very much a team of the future. Too too early to be talking about them in terms of a Premiership, um, possibly next year as well. But if they can keep this squad together and add a bit more quality to it over the next year or two, definitely could be a force um, to be reckoned with, given the amount of game time these young lads are getting. How well they actually play. If you tune in to watch Carlton um, play, you might actually be surprised at just how good they play at times. But Patrick Cripps, absolutely brilliant. He could be one of the main guys actually here for the Brownlow, the actual official award, the Brownlow medal. So he's right bang up at the top for the Donlow. Let me tell you, make no mistake about that. Charlie Curnow, the two Curnow brothers to be fair, but Charlie Curnow and Wayne Johnson, they were the names that I've got. So that's your list on the Donlow medal. You already know one of the names for the um, roughest and toughest mongrel medal being Cunnington. Um, and there was a name given to me for Loose Cannon, but I don't know if he would fit the bill for Roughest and Toughest Mongrel Medal. Let me know what you think of this idea. Mitch Robinson of Brisbane, the Brisbane Lions. He's meant to be a bit of a nutcase, uh, a tilt switch. He can, he can just explode at any given time, and his unpredictable nature is something that um, is going to draw me to watching this guy even more now that the name's been mentioned. So, Mitch Robinson, let me know. Is he and could he challenge Ben Cunnington for the roughest and toughest mongrel medal on the Dawn and Dawn of World Sports Channel? Dawn's channel and Dawn of World Sports Channel, sorry. Um, let me know anyway. So, our rising stars, Port Adelaide, Rosie, Dursma, Butters, um, up out in West Coast, Cameron, scored four goals at the weekend. There was another player I meant to put down and I've completely forgot, but I will get back to it. If I can remember it, I'll write it down in the description section below or in the comment to the video. So do have a wee eye out for that, for the boy that I'm talking about. Um, because I, have, I haven't wrote him down and I've just realised that I never put him down there and I can't remember now. Um, so, they're the Rising Stars. I need help with my Rising Stars. Um, we're going to do the Rising Star medal. I think it's a great idea because there's young guys now that are playing a lot of games of footy at 18, 19 years old. And this is a... This is a physical sport and there's a lot of guys that at that age haven't developed and haven't matured and their, 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 their rib cage and their shoulders haven't broadened out and haven't just got that upper body strength, natural upper body strength yet because they've still to develop. And they are playing the game with great enthusiasm, 
and also no fear and a hunger, a hunger to achieve and succeed. And there's so many young players that have been blown away with how good they are, just skipping past senior pros, big men at the end of the day, who are hitting them hard and just getting back up, bouncing back up and running at them again. And, and it's fantastic to see. So it's a great sport for developing youngsters in the AFL. I really do like it. There's not a lot of sports anymore when there's money riding on it, they'll take risks on youngsters. I can appreciate the likes of Carlton being down there, they've nothing to lose. But your top sides, um, you've got to look at Cameron coming on for the West Coast Eagles who are sitting second. They've brought that young lad on, he's kicked four. He's never going to forget that uh, till the day he dies. Um, playing in the, the derby against Fremantle and stepping up and scoring four. He was absolutely sensational. So, just, as I say, that was just my little point to note there when it comes to Rising Stars. It's absolutely fantastic in the NFL and it's great to see them getting a chance. These are the future of the sport at the end of the day and you need to nurture them the right way and develop them so we can see legends in the next year's game. So, my last thing somebody says to me, because I had mentioned about who's got the best, don't argue. Is it Dusty Martin uh, or is it um, Connington? Connington obviously has had five fines this year, but I, I noticed something the other day there about the don't argue. People are saying, Connington, I says, Dusty's been doing it from like 18 banging folk, banging into the chest past somebody, finding a yard of space and scoring goals. And I was corrected, which I really appreciate you doing, and saying Cunnington's been doing it from his 18 as well, but Dusty is playing at Richmond, and Richmond's the media's little um, baby that they love. And so he gets more attention. I mean, he's cool, he's got the cool hairdo, he's got the tattoos, he looks the part, he's got the yellow puma boots on, he stands out, whereas... Cunnington's very much no frills, plays at a smaller size club that maybe doesn't get as much media coverage in the North Melbourne Kangaroos, but are by no means that far behind him in terms of footy this year. But Cunnington is a big unit and he is a tough player. He plays the game in the correct manner and fashion that it should be played in. And to, I just want to stand this uh, uh, correct this here. It's not the don't, don't argue. It's not called the don't argue. It's called the get the fuck. When somebody's trying to get in at you and tackle you, get the fuck. Bang! Find the yard of space and boom, play the ball, a handball, kick it to your teammate or rifle it straight for a goal, a big tarp, straight at goal, make no mistake where it's going. That's to find you that little yard anyway, that burst of pace into a gap that don't argue or allow you to do it, it keeps the enemy at bay, the enemy. <laughs> Somebody says UFC 240, Cunnington versus Dusty. As a player... Dusty's probably had a better career. He's had a Brownlow before as well, hasn't he? Um, he's probably um, more respected than Cunnington in terms of his AFL career. But if you were talking about a fight who's harder, in my opinion, from what I've seen of Cunnington, Cunnington would win that. That's why he sits at the top so far for the Don Father, the Don Channel and the Don of World Sports roughest and toughest mongrel medal. Congratulations, big man. You play this game in the true spirit that it should be played in. No nonsense. No frills. He doesn't have the tats. He doesn't look cool. He just is a man. He's a man. He's a gorilla. A bear of a man. The alpha male smacks into folk and takes the fine on the chin. I think he's been fined 1500 No, 15 grand this year. $15,000 he's been fined. That's five different incidences he's found himself in. And I absolutely love that. Well done, Big Cheese. I love it anyway. Um, that's the end of the video. This is the Donna World Sports first um, Talk of Brownlow, Donlow, all the wee medals anyway that we're running on the channel. I can't wait till the season starts to come to a crescendo and we start to see um, the real players get into the, getting one hand on the medal. Um, and it's just going to be really, really good stuff. There's loads of good footy to come. I can't wait for my first experience in the preliminary finals and all that there, all the knockout stuff and the MCG Grand Final. Watching it live is going to be absolutely outstanding. I wish I could watch it live at the stadium, but that's probably a year or two away yet before we can afford to do that on the channel. But it will happen. We'll get to the MCG as a family and Melbourne and Australia in particular. Um, to watch this fantastic sport. Thanks very much for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. This is the Donna World Sports. This is going to be unhinged. There's going to be adult swear words on this because I can't help myself. Um, it's the Don Fathers channel basically. This isn't really the family channel. This is a, a, more of an adult based channel based on my language. 
But as I said, do subscribe to it. It's going to be loads of AFL. I've done over about 115 AFL videos so far, so there's going to be a lot more to come. That's in two months. In a year's time, I'll have probably done the guts of a thousand. Um, but it just shows you the dedication and love I have for this sport. Do check out our, our social media platforms and follow us on our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, etc. And you can help us grow as a channel financially by supporting us and joining us through Patreon, which is patreon.com forward slash the Don's channel. All proceeds will go into um, booking flights and trip to Australia and other parts of the world, etc. That we cover on our channel. That would be greatly appreciated. And sponsor the mullet. If you want me to grow a mullet, sponsor me and I'll do it. Um, it will look ridiculous um, My wife won't like it Nobody has one in the surrounding area where we live But if it helps grow the channel financially In order to get us on the road to Australia I will grow a mullet Just wondering what is A mullet is a ridiculously bad hairdo That is absolutely sensational It's like short at the side here right Long at the back And short on the top Short on the top and side here And long at the back it's mental. And there's lots of players in the AFL having a mullet right now. I don't know why it's, it's becoming a craze in Australia right now or something. It's a trend. It's a trend. But there's loads of professional players in the AFL wearing it. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. Just thanks very much for watching anyway. I am the Dawnfather. I really appreciate the support. Cheers, guys, and I'll see you soon.